Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite radical, a very interesting infinite radical. We have the square root of a minus the square root of a plus the square root of a minus the square root of a plus the square root of a so on and so forth. You get the idea, right? The signs alternate. We start with the minus sign and then there's a plus sign, there's a minus sign. They just take turns. And we are going to evaluate this infinite algebraic expression or radical expression in terms of a. What is that supposed to mean? We're going to find something in terms of a, but can we find it? Let's find out. To be able to evaluate this expression, or at least make an attempt, I'm going to go ahead and call it something. I need to call this something. What should I call it? b, z, y, x. How about x? x is the unknown. So let's go ahead and call this whole thing x. Obviously, there's always the question of convergence, but these expressions do converge for some reason, okay? Now, does it converge for all values of a? Probably, I don't know. But let's go ahead and see. One of the things that really makes this problem interesting is that we're not given an a value. So we're going to be finding a general formula, which I think is pretty interesting because the signs constantly change, right? Minus plus, minus plus. What would happen if it, they didn't? Then we would use a shortcut. We would end up with a quadratic equation. So in this case, what are we going to end up with? Let's find out. So once you set the whole thing equal to x, you can go ahead and square both sides. And you can keep doing it, but here's what I would like to show you. Here, the expression starts with the same pattern square root of a minus the square root of a plus the square root of a minus the square root of a. So it's the same thing as x. Nice. So this expression contains itself how many times? Infinitely many times. Make sense? Okay. Having said that, now let's go ahead and plug it in. We have the square root of a minus the square root of a plus x equals x. Nice. So we were able to set up a nicer radical equation because at least this is not infinite. It's a finite radical equation. How nice. How do we go about solving it? By getting rid of all the radicals, all of them. There's two. So let's go ahead and square both sides. When we square both sides, we're going to go ahead and end up with something nice, like a minus the square root of a plus x equals x squared. And of course, we need to do a little bit more of that. But before we dive more into this, I want to show you the result that I got from Wolfram Alpha. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can evaluate something like this in terms of A? Of course, if we gave it a number, maybe it could, but do you think with the variable it can do it? No, nope, it can't, because it doesn't even understand our query. That is one of the shortcomings of Wolfram Alpha and similar large language models, AI, machine learning, whatever you want to call it, okay? but they're still dumb. Anyways, so we have this expression. Let's go ahead and take it from there. a minus the square root of a plus x, square root of x equals x squared. Great. So to get rid of the other radical, don't square both sides because you're going to run into more radicals and you're not going to be able to get rid of them unless you isolate it. Let's go ahead and put the radical on the right hand side and then square both sides, which makes sense, right? If you square both sides now, now you're going to get rid of all the radicals, but we must square a minus x squared squared. <laughs> Great. So that's going to give us a squared minus 2a x squared, like remember the 2ab plus b squared equals a plus x. Of course, this equation is quartic, isn't it? Don't you think so? Because of the x to the fourth. Yay. So with the same sign, like going plus, 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 or minus, 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 we get a quadratic and we can solve it very easy, even in terms of A. But with this one, we did get a quartic. How crazy, how scary is that, right? Can we solve it? Let's find out. So here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to write this as a quartic so you can actually see it is a quartic equation, right? So it goes like this. Do you think we can use the quartic formula? Hmm. Probably not. But there is something that you could probably use. I just remember from some of my previous videos and Nadia fans' comments that we could probably isolate these 
like that. And then maybe add something to both sides to make it a perfect square. Is that gonna work? Well, here's what we can probably do. Let me bring the A squared over because that'll actually make uh, this a perfect square. So I got this, this, and that, and I have X plus A on the right-hand side, or A plus X, doesn't matter. Now the left-hand side is a perfect square, yes, we know that, but the right-hand side isn't. So our goal is gonna be the following. Add something to both sides to keep the left-hand side as a perfect square while making the right-hand side a perfect square. Make sense? Because we can still do it. How? Like adding this 2k times x squared minus a plus k squared. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to add the same thing. 2k times x squared minus a plus k squared. Awesome. Now, the left-hand side becomes x squared minus a plus k squared and the right hand side we need to arrange it a little bit 2k x squared plus x plus a plus k squared minus 2k a great now both sides are perfect squares so can we go ahead and make this a perfect square which means the discriminant needs to be zero and that implies b squared which is one minus four a c and this is where we kind of get into trouble i think i could be wrong but this looks like trouble to me because from here i'm basically getting something like 8k multiplied by this equals one and then i can go ahead and distribute it and come up with a cubic equation like this 8k cubed minus 2a actually that's going to be 16a k squared and then plus 8ak notice that i'm writing it as a cubic in k because my goal is to solve for k the k that will satisfy this equation or that setup and of course this is equal to one so i should bring the one over and now i did get a cubic equation is this equation solvable probably let's give it a try maybe factor out an 8k 8k squared this is going to give us k minus 2a and unfortunately, this does not work. Another thing that I could probably try is these two terms will make up a difference of two cubes. Maybe these two will also make up something. I can take out 8ak and then I'll be getting 1 minus 2k. Yay, that seems to be working. Why? Because I can go ahead and write it like this, right? And now this is 2k minus 1 times 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Actually, that should be 2k because I'm talking about the difference of two cubes. I just got carried away. And then this will be minus 2k minus 1. I negate it to match this, right? And then that'll be multiplied by 8ak. Now 2k minus 1 is a factor. So I can take it out. This is 0. And now I should be getting 4k squared plus 2k minus 8ak plus 1 equals 0. And guess what? From here we can solve for k. One of the values would be k equals 1 half, whatever that's supposed to mean. And the other value is going to be something that you can get from here by using the quadratic formula. Great. So this involves a lot of difficulties, but it's doable. You can do it. Is it going to get anywhere? I'm not sure. So here's what I'd like to do instead. Take this equation, okay, and use it to solve it. Like, I want to solve that equation directly because it's more fun. Uh, here's what I'll show you. This is a really cool problem, and these types of problems appeared on math competitions before in the past. Like, this is a really Olympiad-level problem because you really have to think outside the box. Ready? Okay. Now, if I use the quartic formula, as you notice, uh, it, it's considerably difficult. But if you do something else, like a, use a clever trick, this will be solvable. Notice that this equation is quartic in x, but quadratic in a. Do you see what I'm talking about? Because the highest power of a is a squared. So here's what we're going to do instead. a squared minus. Now we're going to put together the terms with a. That's going to be 2x squared plus 1 will be the coefficient of a if I rearrange the terms. And then I'll continue with x to the fourth, this one, and this one. Okay? 
Cool. Now, since this is quadratic, and if you don't see it as a quadratic, I'm going to go ahead and make it more visible by changing the, oops, what was the thing? Okay, here we go. And this will become an A. As you can see here, this is quadratic in A. You see that? Awesome. So X's are considered constants. Now let's go ahead and solve it with the quadratic formula. This is going to be fun. Negative B plus minus the square root of B squared, which is this, minus 4AC. A is 1. A is not the same A, by the way. Divide by 2. And from here, you're going to get something super duper interesting. Look at this. This is beautiful. Expression inside the radical will turn out to be 2x plus 1 squared. Because what happens is to 4x to the 4th minus 4x to the 4th, then you'll be getting 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Make sense? That's what it is. So when you square root it, it's going to be 2x plus 1 with a plus minus sign. And when you split it up, you're going to get two A values. One of them is going to be 2x squared plus 1 plus 2x plus 1 divided by 2, which is x squared plus x plus 1. And the other one is going to be 2x squared plus 1 minus 2x minus 1 divided by 2. And that will give you x squared minus x. Guess what? This gives you two quadratics. One more time. If you set this equal to A, you're going to get x squared plus x plus 1 minus A equals 0. And from here, x is going to be negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. And that will be 4 times A minus 1 divided by 2A. And then the other equation is going to give us this equals A. And from here, we get x squared minus x minus A equals 0. And that will be x equals negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. So we get two solutions. Let's go ahead and erase the other stuff and we can kind of bring these two together, hopefully. Let's kind of like bring them closer so we can fit them on the screen and kind of circle the whole thing or box it, okay? So these are the solutions, but here's the million dollar question. We had a single expression like this and it should have a single solution, right? Or does it depend on the value of A? Which of these would be the actual solution? That's for you to find out because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.